You're watching the June edition of Ask Parse Anything. This month, we take on your questions, your product feature requests, and so much more with our developer advocates, Fosco, Eric, and Yuri. Let's get right to it. Can you guarantee that prices won't go up? Uh, well, we can't guarantee it, uh, but I'm really, really confident that our pricing will only get more affordable as time goes by. Do you have plans for auto scaling, for example, short time high request rates? Um, this is a great question. It's been asked uh, many, many times over the years. Um, we are working on something in this area. Uh, so I would encourage people who are interested in this type of system to stay tuned. Is there an automated way for me to update my Xcode project with the latest SDK without having to do it manually? Um, so a, a lot of times people use CocoaPods and they, they do CocoaPods update, um, but that is a manual process. You have to actually push a button to make that happen. Um, and I kind of think that that's the way it should be. Um, I don't think that your project should just automatically update itself. Um, like if we were to release something that is maybe uh, a breaking change or um, we have an issue with it, um, you would want to immediately know that that was the cause because you had just updated the SDK. Um, separately, I think we are looking at um, Xcode plugins um, to maybe uh, allow you to see that there is a new SDK available quickly and maybe do some other features too. Are there plans to make an API available to get the results of background jobs? Hmm. Uh, this is another one of those things that I think we should do. Um, I don't think that there should be anything on our website that you can't do via an API. And so, yeah, I definitely think we're interested in taking any of those things that you can't currently do and exposing those via this, the API. Can we use domains that don't start with www on parse hosting? Yeah. Um, we have, uh, it's in our documentation and it's in the, the custom hosting area, uh, custom domain name section. Um, it's called Apex Domain Names, uh, and we use a, a certain uh, redirection service for this, uh, but it's in the documentation about how to set that up, and, and you can use just the root, you know, yourdomainname.com for parse hosting. Is it true that parse.cloud.http request doesn't support post requests of type multi-part or form data? It is true. It is true. Um, this is one uh, specific scenario that we uh, haven't supported from the beginning. Um, and there's been very few requests for it. Um, for those scenarios where you think you might need this, I would encourage developers to use our cloud code webhooks functionality to put some of this more advanced stuff uh, on a separate server somewhere. Is there a plan to provide rich media push notifications where we can send images, audio, videos? Um, so rich push is one of those interesting like buzzwords. Uh, I guess there are some other providers that, that will give you some of this uh, functionality. And um, it's possible that we could look at putting this into parse UI um, our UI library. Um, but generally, what's really going on behind the scenes is you are sending some extra little piece of data in the payload for the push notification, kind of like we talked about in last month's APA. Um, and then in your app, you're uh, taking that payload when they trigger it and doing something with it. Uh, so some apps will just send like a link to a web page. And if they trigger the notification, then it becomes a rich push. When they go into the app, the app opens up a web view. Or maybe they send a link to an image, so it fires up a, an image viewer or a video player. Um, so all of these things can be done. Um, it's true that we're not currently providing like an automatic um, system for this, and it's true that we could, um, but I don't know that we have any immediate plans to add this. I'm working on an app that integrates with an external service which uses an invalid SSL certificate. How can I send an HTTP request to the server while ignoring any invalid certificates? Unfortunately, I don't think we're going to allow uh, the use of, of invalid uh, certificates. And it's for your protection, it's for your user's protection uh, to stop any sort of man-in-the-middle type attacks. 
um, your server or your uh, external service that you're trying to use should have a valid um, certificate. Will we ever be able to store arrays in Parse Analytics? Um, I think it's not likely that we will um, support putting arrays into analytics. It seems like uh, dimension data like that is intended to be very simple. Um, and I could see some issues that that would cause. So I, I would think that uh, it's simplistic enough, I, I doubt we would add arrays. I'd like to hear about strategies for a robust search integration. I've already implemented search as an array of search terms, as suggested by Parse, but would like to offer something a little bit more robust. Hmm. Okay, um, and beyond some of the previous like blog series that we've had about implementing scalable search, which uh, tokenizes different fields and stores them uh, in a way that then you could uh, search them scalably, um, there, are, there are some external services that we do recommend. Um, one specifically that comes to mind is Algolia. Um, it's another service that, that's their core competency is like a really quick uh, search indexing. And so you can set this up in your Parse app with um, using some database triggers like Aftersave to send the indexing information to Algolia. And then you can implement these other services uh, to get access to that data in a way that you might not be able to scalably do on Parse directly. With all the effort Apple's been taking to bring Swift in as their new major language, will you be moving all parse code into a full Swift library? Yeah, that's a really good question. Uh, Swift as a language is still being developed, and we want to make sure that we uh, move into Swift when it's a little bit more stable. Uh, we do have ideas um, that when or as Apple removes support for older devices like iOS 6 and 7, uh, then we'll probably really moving you know, with full force uh, updating our, our libraries. But as it, as it is, uh, the performance that we put into um, our SDKs, uh, we put a lot of time and energy into that and making them perform as, as best as we can. Are there plans to provide options to remove the thousand object limit? So when you create a query uh, on parse, you start off with a default 100 uh, 100 object return limit that can be set up to uh, a thousand. Beyond that, uh, you have to use uh, certain uh, other types of queries. Um, we don't intend to remove this uh, anytime soon um, because these limitations are put in place to help the developers build better experiences. Um, if you're pulling in thousands and thousands of, of records at once, um, you have to think that, well, maybe your users are having to wait all that time. So. Uh, we think with a 100 to 1,000 uh, object limit, um, it sh it's there for a reason, um, and we don't intend on changing it anytime soon. Why is there no way to create an image PF file from the web and cloud code? And is there any chance it'll appear soon? So that's a good question. Getting files into Parse um, can be done through many ways. Uh, using HTTP requests, you can actually uh, download a file, uh, download the bytes, and then store it and save it as a PF file. This can be done in, in Cloud Code. Um, what we'll do is we, we'll include that code in our notes and we can share it with the, with the audience. When scheduling Cloud Jobs, you can only schedule the same job once. It'd be great if you could schedule it more than once with a different schedule or different parameters. This is, a, this is actually a really good question. Um, and I think a feature that we should add to uh, the, uh, the Cloud Code job uh, uh, a feature or product. Um, I'll pass it on to the team and we'll see, uh, uh, we'll see if we can build it. What happened to the dark dashboard theme? I feel like a change and can't find the theme control anymore. That is true. Uh, we did have a toggle that you could switch between light and dark themes. Um, but when we updated our design, uh, it seems like we removed it. Uh, what I'm going to do is share that with my team that people did like that sort of option and maybe we can see about adding it back. I think one reason why you'd want this is uh, uh, when you build or work on you know, your development environment, some people prefer dark screens, some people prefer light screens. So it's something I'll share with their team. With all the available SDKs and APIs for parse.com, will we ever see feature parity of the JavaScript F SDK with the REST API? 
So there are no immediate plans for a uh, first-party JavaScript SDK, but we are constantly working on ways to make uh, working with Node and JavaScript uh, better and easier for our Parse users. Um, stay tuned to see what we work on or release. Are there any plans to beef up the user management features and APIs in Parse? There aren't any uh, current plans for that, but seeing that people are interested in this, and he, if we could hear uh, that our users are interested in more uh, full-featured uh, functions, uh, we would be happy to pass that on uh, to the rest of our team. Is there a limit to querying the installation class? I hear the limit is 100 or 1,000. That's a good question. Uh, when you're doing push requests, uh, there, uh, there is no limitation. So if you have you know, 100,000 uh, installations, they will, we will query through all of them. Uh, if you're doing a, a query on the installation object on your own, in your own code or um, maybe uh, in a cloud code function, um, then yes, you're going to have limitations. Those limitations are 100 by default, 1,000 uh, if you uh, set the limit higher. Um, uh, however, if you want to actually go through all of them, you can still go through all of them using a query.each, but you're going to use up uh, some of your requests per second. What happens when the database storage limit is exceeded, and is there a way to exactly measure the amount of database storage used? That's a good question. Uh, well, if your storage, uh, if you exceed your storage and you send requests, we don't stop accepting. We, we continue to accept the requests from your applications. Um, we do charge for storage, so what you should do is take a look at our uh, pricing page to see what that cost is. Uh, regarding um, the amount of storage that you're currently using, we provide at least one metric that shows a percentage of your current quota being used, but the actual storage on uh, each of the classes and objects we don't currently uh, provide, just because it's a little bit hard to calculate you know, the storage of all those objects itself. Is there any structure coming that would allow us developers to upload more than a 10 megabyte file to the back end? Hmm. That's a great question. Um, it's really unlikely that we'll update uh, the file size cap. Uh, just like on GitHub, you wouldn't want to store your giant files there. If you're storing large files on Parse, it's probably not the best architecture. So you might want to look into S3 uh, for that case. Is it possible to set up a CMS website using Parse and then have applications looking at the same data? Yeah, totally. We, um, Parse can and has definitely been used as a CMS. Uh, you should check out our access control list uh, for access rights. And uh, I don't think there's like a direct plugin that works with WordPress or other CMSs, uh, but the community might come up with something. How do I find a good Parse developer? Oh, that's a great question. Um, so first of all, you could post to the Google Groups. Uh, then definitely, if you're in San Francisco, New York, or London, you could uh, join a meetup group uh, and meet folks there. Uh, and Twitter. Uh, post on Twitter, and we'll, we'll try to help you find developers. Is there any retry mechanism built into the Unity SDK or other client SDKs when calling cloud code? That's a great question. Uh, the problem is there's never one answer on how to handle situations where you have bad connection or when uh, requests fail. Uh, so it's really up to you to decide what to do in that situation. So if there's like an error on updates, you, you want to check those errors and you want to act accordingly depending on your situation. I store all of my cloud code files in the docs folder on my computer. If I delete those folders or reinstall my operating system, will the corresponding app stop working? So the app will definitely not stop working. Um, going further, it's probably not the best idea to just store them as files on your computer without having any backup. Uh, so you might want to back it up. But your, your app is going to be intact. Uh, you won't be able to edit the code online, but you can definitely copy it out in case like, of emergency and everything broke down on your side. Um, so there's, there's a way to do that. But unfortunately for now, there's no easy way to use CLI to download them back. So it's nice to keep them on the GitHub repo or in a Dropbox folder so you can keep backup all the time. Will every successful before save trigger a result in an after save call? What happens when I call set counter to zero and increment counter by one in the same before save? Yeah, so every before save will trigger an after save as long as you return response.success. Um, if you call in that order, uh, then you'll the, the resulting operation is going to be one. Uh, 
And uh, basically, when you try to do multiple operations on a single key, um, our SDKs will merge them based on what was previously done, so in a, in a pretty intelligent way. Could you send me a daily backup CSV of my data? Um, no, unfortunately, due to the size of the data sets, uh, it's not feasible to back up our user data, data daily. Uh, it's in your best interest to keep uh, the backup uh, either using webhooks or manual export or the REST APIs. Please create an option similar to use master key that will circumvent the before save, after save, before delete, and after delete hooks. This is important in many situations where you might want to bypass validations or other business logic. Yeah, this is a great question. Um, and I think we do a great job of answering it in the docs. Uh, but you can actually already do that. Uh, you can detect if the request has been made by the master key uh, by checking request.master. Uh, and if it's true, then it's been done by the master key. And so you can abort early or do some extra logic depending on your use case. When will any phone be coming to Android? Ah, that's, <laughs> that's an excellent question. Uh, so any phone was open sourced by Fosco earlier last month. Uh, and uh, I'm, I'm actually working on, on an Android copy for it, but I'm not the best Android developer you can find. So if you want to step up and uh, build an Android version of any phone, we welcome uh, pull requests. And you might also happen to answer the other question, which was how to find a good uh, Parse developer. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in to the very end of this month's Ask Parse Anything. You can now visit this link for a very special surprise from the team. And we had a blast answering all your questions. We'll see you next month.